イバーそして右側魔法少女ザンギタンウルフォーやりたい The Zangitan, rather, not Itozan. It's the other one. It's the other of the two Japanese Zangi flares. I think I've heard this matchup is bad, but I forget which way. I think Zangief wins. He can kind of control. The Lariat's kind of nice. It's not as good at hitting both sides as it is in Street Fighter V, but it's still quite good. But I think, the, I think it works well against Viper. Oh, Dizzy, though. That's it. GG. Oh no, no, it's not. Ah, nice links. I think that's two frames each time. Remember Green Hand? Zangief is such a weird creature in this game. He feels a lot more like... He feels... I don't know. I feel like they got the spirit of how Zangief is supposed to play better in 5. He's like this weird footsie thing. He like started. In Street Fighter Super to like A2012. I feel like Zangief had the Zangief spirit. But like in vanilla, he's he uses entirely different tools to succeed. And in USF4 he uses entirely different tools to succeed. I'm kind of okay with Geef being fast. I'm okay with him having like a four frame short that oh no goes pretty far. I don't remember what his far short is. It might be like five. I'm okay with him having um, two frame SPD. Zangief has really fast normals in Street Fighter 2 anyway. He could convert too well. That's the thing that really disgusted me about Geef in USF4. Is that Geef is kind of supposed to be anti-combo. Nice jump, or Samurai House. He didn't have the meter. That was weird that even F-80 seed. Did he get her? Oh, he shouldn't have jumped. Unless he'd already jumped. The thing about like the red focus combo, like EX hand, red focus, the whole thing about EX hand is that it's not really intended to, you can't really use it to make a long combo. You know what I mean? Like when you gave Zangief like safe, confirmable attacks that lead to 50% combos, and he still has like his good unblockables and whatnot, and his good like mix up, but then also he has like the same conversions other characters have. I feel like that's that shouldn't be. Geef is usually anti anti combo. That's the price you pay for having like an unblockable. Because you have very, very short confirms. Having like such a huge conversion from Crouch Light Kick, which is a true mix up with an SPD. Most Zangief players didn't even use the SPD that much, that's the whole point. They just used their safe confirms and they worked because people were afraid of the SPD. Wish I could be watching this match. That was nice. Rufus has never been seen to be a super strong character in Japan. Or rather, he is considered to be kind of strong, but like, he's seen to be a lot of kind of gimmicky. A character you can shut down when you understand him. I'm doing alright. I woke up at like 5 o'clock today. I am. And I don't know why. I just felt like fully rested. I wasn't tired. So I just got up. Geef definitely wasn't like outside the normal realm of power in Street Fighter 4. I just feel like his his gameplay style was all fucked up. He wasn't like too strong or too weak. His objectives were just wrong. Don't tell me we're getting cut off most of the videos. I'd like to watch them all. Alright. Guy Rose. That's cool. What's that guy? Ultra Double. Ultra Double Guy. That's kind of cool. So Ultra 2 is probably to punish a bad um, drill. 
and Ultra 1 is probably because if you don't run Ultra 1, you are basically don't have an Ultra as Guy. You can actually combo into Ultra 1, whereas Ultra 2 is only a 2 frame punish. So I think that Guy should generally pick either Ultra 1 solo or Ultra Double, actually. And that's what he's done. That being said, I think Guy is actually one of the characters who does a 60% um, damage on an Ultra 2, which is kind of stupid because his Ultra 2 isn't even that good. Miss the link. Crutching opponents, that's a uh, one frame length into low short. Guys like Don. No coming back from that. He could get any orb so easily and convert it into a true block string into chip. Remember those? Ooh, neat. The throw whiffed, because it was the recovery of her stand medium kick, which is unthrowable. Nice combo. Crutch fierce. Bar strong. It's like a three frame link. It's not even hard. Oh, he got a trade. It was like crutch jab with a stand forward. He probably had a trade combo. That'd have been really cool. He should just not cancel it, but Rose should jump. Mm, no. I uh, still got the combo. That was fast. I want to see Guy do some cool stuff. Double on Guy is probably okay. It depends on the matchup. Ultra 2 is often useless, but in the matchups where it's okay, it's okay. In matchups where you need an important minus 2 punish. Ah. He wanted far strong fierce, but he missed the strong. There's a trade combo. Trade combos with lights and heavies trading are really easy, especially very plus frame lights like that one. Yeah, I can jump from certain ranges. What the fuck was that? You should jump medium kick, I think. Oh, he missed. That was nice. I don't think there was a conversion there. Other than what he got. He might have been able to do like EX shoulder, but I think EX shoulder doesn't go into hard. No, I don't know where it works. I think it works on some characters and not others. EX shoulder into hard spin kick in the corner. You can always do light shoulder into hard spin kick. And you can always do light shoulder into EX spin kick. But I forget about EX shoulder into hard spin kick. I think that works. That might work all the time, and I just forgot. Good lord. Does he do the big combos? Ah. You can do some big stuff on Sagat. Close run has Fire Fierce. Uh, Fire Strong, I think, works on Sagat. What he probably should have done was like the... Um, oh, I know the combo he should have done. Should have been jump in roundhouse, close roundhouse, down towards roundhouse, and then juggle Ultra 1. Nice timing. That was a really good comeback from Sagat. If he did a delayed uh, EXDP like that, it would catch guys backdash. And it would beat Guy's EX uppercut, but it would um, chip Guy out if he blocked. And Guy, it would catch Guy's jump if he tried to jump out. It was pretty much checkmate, if it was well-timed. That's a shame, I want to see some Guy players. Guy probably had a kill combo on that, when he got that like jump in. I don't even think it's super hard to do close roundhouse down towards roundhouse. It might be two frames, but it might be one. Kenzo versus Zatsu. Wow. I'm surprised he didn't go through. Light DP. You take your life into your hands when you do that, is Akuma. It's the only good one. Medium and hard have better invincibility, I think, but um, they don't knock down on all hits. And if you get one hit and it's not the hit that knocks down, you're fucked. So you've got to do reversal light DP, Suzukuma. But light DP has enough invincibility that it'll at least trade, so it's okay. You think Daigo is the beast in this game? Strongest Daigo's ever been was like Super Era, Street Fighter 4. Vanilla and Super. He was actually unbeatable. Like, really unbeatable. No one said a chance. Daigo was playing a different game from everyone else. 
In the blender. Remember Nisha jump fireball? I remember. Good block. Clearly expecting to block that kind of messed him up. Set play. Oh. That was a nice, uh. Oh. Forward dash has no invincibility. He got a forward dash when he wanted a back dash. That might hit. That was pretty cool. I bet this one even kill. It's a half ultra. It's the teleport version. Might kill. There it killed. It's nice using that light thunder knuckle. That teleport, he was looking for a uh, reversal. It's very good for Viper to use EX Seismo or EX or Heart Thunder Knuckle FADC. And you can't FADC something that doesn't hit. So he's teleporting away trying to bait a Heart Thunder Knuckle that he can react and teleport. Teleport cancel Ultra. And if he just teleports and Viper doesn't do anything, Viper has a hard time punishing that kind of teleport. Mid screen. Why is there a Chun-Li just sitting there? Sakura? Oh. That was pretty brave. Wake up Ultra 1 against Sakura. There's a really good chance fighting Sakura that you're going to be eating a meaty light Tatsu. Which is unthrowable during its hitting frames. It also is safe and does chip damage and leads to giant combos for Sakura. I would hate this matchup as Sakura. I feel like she doesn't have adequate tools to keep Keef out. So you're using your shitty fireball and your stand roundhouse and your crouch fierce. And like Sakura's combos, if you drop Sakura has lots of hard combos. Lots of tight links, and if you drop one you eat a SPD. Or a Lariat. Or God forbid a seven twenty. Honestly, that sounds... What the fuck? Jump back EX Tatsu? Sakura's don't EX Tatsu at all midair. It's not a thing. What was he trying to do? There must be some elaborate plan. Okay, I'm not an expert, but is that a T-Hawk and a DJ? What the hell's going on? How does something like this even happen? It's Kita Senju. So this is like the best DJ. And one of the best Street Fighter 4 players these days. Which unfortunately, you know, is not as not as intertwined as you would think. Look at all them points. DJ, I think DJ wins this matchup pretty comfortably, actually. DJ's kind of shit, but like, DJ versus Grapplers is okay, and DJ versus this Grappler is good. Hmm, I like that. A lot of jump-ins are kind of vulnerable to the dive. Or I should say anti-airs are vulnerable to the dive. DJ, if he doesn't have charge, has to anti-air on a prediction. But if he does have charge, he can just beat everything with like medium upkick, I think. Or EX upkick for sure. I think that might have been a punish on the sweep. Sweep is like minus 9 for T-Hot. But it recovers really far away. If sweep hits an airborne opponent, it actually gets a launch state. But it's hard to do anything with it. DJ has a lot of stupid shit like that.
putting up a nice little wall right now. DJ in this game is kind of tight. What the fuck? The sad thing about those little Sobot combos is it's actually really hard to convert them into anything stronger than what he converts them into. Like, if you combo from a light normal, you can't get medium hard or EX Sobot. And from light, you can't do a super cancel and you can't do an FADC. Not a punish. He might have been able to super to punish that. Not that it was a good idea. Huh, he didn't get the follow up. If you get anti air medium one, at any height, you can do another medium one or um, a hard one or a close run house. No, close run house is one hit only, I think. Oh, he got it. You can juggle an ultra two there, it's pretty funny. I've never seen anyone go for it in a match. I guess I can see why DJ picked Ultra won this matchup. Let's see get big damage on certain things. Like Condor Dives. I think it'll punish even an EX Condor Dive, but I could be completely wrong. It'll definitely punish a normal one. EX Condor Dive is really minus, but really far away. Regular Condor Dive is slightly minus, but slightly farther, far away. It's much easier for most characters to punish a regular Condor Dive than an EX one. But certain characters can punish EX ones. Is that R? No, it's not. Blanca player is Shinto. I think Blanca's usually say this is a bad match. It's not like a horrible, but the Arc's supposed to do well. His normals do okay against Blanca, and he has punishes for everything. Ooh. Catch first definitely would work there. Blanca has a bit of fun. Ooh, nice. You don't see those combos very often. He's going to go for the chip out now, I think, I guess. No, not quite enough. I don't think... Um, no, Balog probably can't escape the chip out with like a reversal hard headbutt. He'll either make the ultra whiff. Ugh. It traded. Sin Strong is normally really good there. Maybe he hit it late. Maybe the angle was bad. We'll never find out. Lightning was really bad early on. Um, when there's more third strike to watch, we'll watch more third strike. Easy as that. Look at all these cool players. Rufus versus Balrog, I'm down. When does the match start? Reading that word, electrolytes, reminds me my friend left Gatorade in my fridge and I'm tempted to go get one and drink it. He got like an 8 pack of them. Fight. I forget how this matchup's supposed to go. I've seen it a lot between like J Wong and PR Rog. This is R. 
R is usually considered to be one of the two best Balrogs in the world, alongside PR Rog. PR Rog said he went to Japan and played R a fuck ton of sets, and he like generally won. When you watch R, you can tell he's so fucking good. PR Rog is really good too, though, so whatever. Meaty Stain Fierce. Yes, Toshinsai. Oh my god, why is this so free? Nice. After he blocked the jump penny, he was already dead. Early jump fierce. And almost don't have that much disparity in this game, unlike Street Fighter V. A lot of jump fierces are like borderline the same speed as like jump lights. So jumping with heavies is very common. I mean, it's very common anyway, in every Street Fighter. But like air, air to air with heavies is very common. Frog jump fierce is really, really quick. Look at that damage to those lights. Lights are so lights are very strong in this game. But damn, in order to make lights fair, having these twenty damage jabs. Lights in this game are like um lights in anime games. You got like super, super unbelievably friendly combo potential off of any light connect in any context, but it won't be very strong. But like, you know, if you're landing a 70% ultra, it doesn't really matter the combo that led to the 70% ultra. Wow. The Chun is just there to look nice. Uh, if I forget anti air hard Thunder Knuckle, she can juggle another Thunder Knuckle. There it is. And if she trades, she can do a dash in and then juggle another Thunder Knuckle. Pretty dank combo. Thunder Knuckle's not super strong to justify that combo. Viper's designed around having free juggle potential everywhere. Hmm. That was an advanced read. Go for the cross up, then neutral jump. Trying to make a hard thunder knuckle whiff or an EX seismo whiff. Guarantee it. Didn't pay out. But it was cool seeing such a such a hard read. Sakura Kami. I always like this matchup. USF4? Fuck off. I don't even know who I didn't do. Every now and then people still comment on those. I'll be getting comments on those videos till the end of time. Sakura needs like frame perfect walking to get 7 jabs, but she can get like 5 pretty comfortably. Also, I think if you're getting that many jabs, you probably need a low forward and not like any sort of heavy. Oh no. Look at that Kami set play. Back throw with a jab. Look at Sakura use that delayed stand to ruin that set play. Having a jump in that you cannot, that you have to crouch block is kind of tricky. That's why it works. Oh. 
Sakura is quite a bit like her alpha version. Almost identical. Beefy light confirms and high damage. And nothing else. Stay around house pokes. Oh, dirty. That's kind of a different timing than a jump light kick cross up, though. So, not actually mix up. That one, on the other hand, that was tricky. Yeah, that was GG. Either Sakura did wake up EX DP. Which was gonna go under and Sakura and Kimi could punish with like a drill, or um, Sakura was gonna wake up backdash, which was gonna get caught by the DP, I think, or Sakura was gonna wake up blocking and die instantly. Hmm. Ultra two, huh? Mogenta is a really good um, Moloto. Mo Mogeta. Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's... Mm, he had a kill combo off of that, I think. You get Stan Roundhouse into... Uh, Rekka's there. Or Stan Roundhouse slow forward Rekka's. Rather. Well, I know it like, probably beats Rolento pretty bad at a high level. Faye was actually really good in Super. Faye was really good in Vanilla. But then all his bad matchups were nerfed in um, Super. And then he got buffed and all his bad matchups were nerfed in AE, so... Relento is not so bad. But he might be the worst DLC character. I shouldn't say DLC, Ultra character. Hugo might actually be better. And Poison, DiCaprio, and Elena are all way better. Aye, aye, jury. That's all I need to hear. I'm not seeing any games. Oh, yeah. Elena. Nice. Oh, yeah. Back around us leads to a combo on counter hit, but he got a mid-air connect. Oh, I love this character. Elena, my waifu. Oh my god, DP. Elena's DP is not invincible, but it does go really far, and it's pretty fast. Got the combo. He went for big damage, too. Cancelled straight away. That was good. That was smart play. That's all true block string. Probably with punish. Three frame crouch jab that goes half screen. It's real good. It's probably the best crouch jab in the game. I can't think of a better one. Only Balog comes close. A lot of people think it's a little short though. A lot of people are like. Alina has a good low overhead mix up, but it's mostly a good low mix up based on that move and not based on any of her normals. Most of her normals are kind of mediocre for lows. Like the slide is good, but it's not. It's not something you can easily just use any anywhere. Hard. That's not max damage, and he lost some hits anyway. You can do, I think that works on every character. Level 3 focus into uh, Stain Fierce. 
technically speaking, max damage is like Stam Roundhouse, low jab, low strong. But that's an unplinkable one frame link into a plinkable one frame link, so. How about just not? Comboing into regular focus is not so rare. Almost every character with a fireball can do that. Honestly, every every combo where Elena combos into level 2 crumple, she can just do a dash cancel and get like the same damage or better damage. I always did the crumple combo, but it's not optimal, like almost ever. Ai Ai Jury. I can think it was Smash tier list I've seen. I saw um, B2 King's melee tier list. And he put a couple like weird characters kind of high. Alright. I wouldn't say kind of high, but like. When I see Smash melee tier lists, a lot of the time people just take characters like Pichu and put them bottom one. His, bo his Pichu was like bottom 10, but it wasn't like, you know. Elena doesn't have weird hitboxes anymore. She's got weird, um, she doesn't, most characters when they, when they rec finish the recovery of their move, um, they leave extended her boxes out, but Elena doesn't leave extended her boxes. All the hitboxes and her boxes were done by a different team for USF5, I mean USF4. Oh no, and his team worked on the first four versions of this game. But it was Ayano and his team that did the fifth. <laughs> Only the top ten characters really matter in melee, from what I can tell. The game has not so great balance. I see a lot of characters that are supposed to be like like mid, or maybe like low mid, like Mario, Doctor Mario. That like never win anything ever. If you're not like one of like top ten, you're basically not even playing. I see Sheik. I see Captain Falcon. I see Space Animals. I see Marth. That's like the big ones in my opinion. Those are the ones I almost always see in Puff. And then there's like who else? Oh no, Kimmy around. Occasionally, I see characters like Yoshi do well. Early jump strong. If it's a late jump, you get two strongs. If it's an early jump, you only get one. Yeah, I've seen Samus. Samus is not so bad. Oh yeah, Ice Climbers, I forgot about them. Ice Climbers to me are like the most busted character, but from what I understand it, they're only kind of, they're only, they're only really good in melee. They're not like the best. It's because there's actual counterplay to the Ice Climbers. You can separate them if you're smart. And if you kill one, Popo by himself is pretty shitty. Peach! Yeah. Give me the Elena. I guess I want I to win. I guess. A lot of short, stand strong. Stand strong is like a pretty fast button for Jerry. It's like four frames. Ooh, got a jumping combo on the DP. 
That's a lot of damage. Counter hit overhead, you probably don't have anything from that. A lot of overheads don't get frame advantage on counter hit. There you go. That's a more optimal combo. Nice block. That was probably unsafe. Because that was like... That looked like the light of the medium one. Both of those are minus three or worse. That was heavy. Nice and safe. Yes, you can't duck that anymore. That's a USF4 buff. That was like really late in coming for Jury. Nice delayed stand. Got the two frame link from the X mount smash. This is like an Elena round now. This is really hard for Jury to make a comeback. Even with this, Elena still has healing and a lot of HP. Chaining into an overhead that you can combo out of. Ooh. Pretty sure melee tier lace is still just based on your worst match. And how winnable it is. From what I can tell, no one counter picks Fox. That's the range. Lane grab you from really far away. Jump back strong. Neat. A lot of frame advantage in that enough ADC. T bar suspend though. Wake up hard punch to dodge a low. That was weird. Missed the link. Ooh. Background house is minus two. I think. It's either minus one or minus two. So he did it and then he mashed EXTP when he saw he was blocked. That was pretty scummy. It's pretty gross. Nice gross match. Is that really the end of the tournament? And he's putting his hand up like he just won the whole thing. Let me make 100% sure. By checking the next part of this. Okay, under night, I think. I think this is under night. Might know it's not. I've never even seen this fighting game. It's like characters with giant katanas. I don't know what Japan plays these days. And then Virtua Fighter. I can tell it's I can tell it's Virtua Fighter because it looks like Tekken. Except whenever the characters hit each other, it feels like they're hitting each other with marshmallows. Trying to figure out what this game is. Can't fucking tell. The main girl looks literally exactly like the girl from My Little Sister Can't Be This Cute. I guess that was it for the USF4. Well, that was neat. Anyway, let's check out the SF5. I mean, we like that game, right? Bonk. Damn it. It's misaligned now.
I'm up real early. That's already a really cool matchup. How often do you see this one? This is um, Toshin Sight Official TV3. All one word. Just a second ago, I was watching Toshin Sai Official TV 2. There's too little that can happen in um, this game. I feel like that's the fundamental problem with it. No, I don't want to change my camera and stuff. There's no deeper level to a lot of the mix-ups in Street Fighter V. Balrog. This appears to be casuals. Tina Kelly sounds fucking grody and disgusting. Ken and Jerry sounds fun. That was a punish, but it could have been way better. He got some medium kick punish and he had the medium charge. Could have gotten a pretty nice combo. Nice. My whiff punish was actually super good. I think he X fireball on the corner opponent's plus on block. But Ken actually doesn't have any three frame normal, and also not that many fast like mediums. Back strong is fast. That one's five, I think. Ken used to have the fastest medium in the game. But back strong by itself is um, not very good. And most of the things Ken can get insulin to are also not very good on block. Only EX Fireball. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they could beat Ryu. Man, Jerry sucks. Be nice to just be able to ha activate and have a consistent combo. Sam Fierce just whiffing like that. It's like, what even was she supposed to do? She could have done EX um, for her and Kyaku. This game needs some quality of life changes for some characters. I need to find some things that won't change the tier that much, but will make the character like less horrible to play. Let's get to the part where they're actually having the tournament. Well, that appears to be it. There's a whole lot of casuals at the beginning of this. Oh, these are still casuals. Who is this jury? Okay, so it's just a random Street Fighter V station. No tournament associated with it whatsoever. This is here. Here we go. Look, it's a Ryu. That's already cool. And a Kareen. This is like not a bad match. This is actually a match where like, you know, 
both characters have to be tactical and like function correctly and stuff. I don't know if it's 5-5. Five five. I wouldn't be surprised if Kareen won a bit. But at least Ryu does Ryu things and Kareen does Kareen things. It's not a broken match. Like most of Ryu's matchups are. Ryu can do reversal light DP to always punish a sweep. Depending on the range, he can do other stuff. Sin short, I think, generally works. I think. I think reversal stand short works. But you can't really do anything from reversal stand short. Reversal stand short in TX Fireball might work at certain ranges. I think they got a faux arcade machine set up. Ooh. D pass connect. Next use the parry to dodge the um, guaranteed plus frames. I think Ryu is plus frames if he anti airs with a air parry. I mean, with a anti air parry. Kind of risky though, because they can't empty jump. And then crush counter him or throw him. This is Kyabetsu? This is the Viper player from Street Fighter 4. I just read that. Kyabetsu means cabbage, I think. He had a combo there. That was a nice convert. Ryu has to burn a bar to get like safe converts out of a lot of stuff. Because his main ranged combo option requires force stand. And he has his only force stand is Crutch Fierce, which is generally out of range. Oh, jab stands strong as a 3 frame frame trap. And it's also a combo on counter hit. Makes it a very good sequence. The problem is if both hits are blocked, Reeves kind of in a shit position. Well, I wouldn't call it shit, he's frame advantage. It's just that he only gets one chance at a frame trap every time he comes in. There's no, like, Ibuki two layer frame trap for Ryu. Oh no. Ibuki is like a three layer frame trap. You got, like, Crouch Jab, Sin Strong, which is a three frame frame trap. And then Sin Strong, like, forward. Or, like, Sin Strong, short, short, or, like, something like that. So you can come out of the Crouch Jab. You can react to the counter hit on the Sin Strong. If the, counter, if the Crouch Jab is a counter hit, you get a full combo. If the Sand Strong hits, you get a full combo. Like, you can still convert that into a thin short command grab. If the uh, uh, stand forward or stand short is blocked, well, the stand short is blocked, you can get anything. But if the stand forward is blocked, you get like a. Uh, uh, well, you don't get anything per se. If it hits, you can convert it on reaction into um, her TC. Or you can just use the, you know, plus frames. Power. That was, he could have just killed. Wasn't expecting that crouch jab to connect or let alone counter hit. Ryu really, 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 really needs a Kuma stand medium kick. That would like patch up most of his holes. A two medium frame trap option would help him a lot. Right now his two medium frame trap option is staying strong into itself, which isn't that great. And a force stand normal that he can actually combo into would be fucking swell. Like one that works in frame traps and stuff, one that works from lights. Ryu like desperately wishes he had Akuma stay medium kick. When you look at the balance differences between Ryu and Akuma, it's like night and day. Because it's like everything that like, oh, it would be busted if Ryu had this. And then it's like Akuma is just like, hi, I have it.
ぱりこの攻撃に対して剣様がうまくいきましたね。そうですね。キャネス選手の攻めがどんどん激しくなってるんで。This game would fall to pieces if it had to strike parries. However, I think it wouldn't take much modification to make parries work, but they would need to do something. If they did a modified version of those strike parries, it would be okay, maybe. But they need to like add more moves. There aren't enough moves. A lot of characters only have one option in a given position. One of the things about Street Fighter 3 they were very careful about is that every character has like three things they can do in most scenarios. So like you can always be unpredictable about which way you're going to be parried, or whether you're going to be parried at all. I think if there was a game nowadays, with, if they made like a Street Fighter, a new Street Fighter with parries, they would have to do three parry directions. I think it would have to be like, this is the one for standing buttons, this is the one like with forward, this is the one with like crouching punches, which is like down forward, and this is the one for crouching kicks, it's like down. If you had three different parry directions, that would be a lot more manageable. Oh yeah. This is some good shit posting right here. Abigail! I missed the first match. I mean the first round. Abigail is low-key kind of good. No matter how you look at it, the ceiling is better in 4 than 5. That was not a punish. Oh no. That was good. Better to just dodge the mix up and the white health plus the Oki time. And he's not going to need that V meter for this round. This is Storm Kubo, by the way. Nice. Who does wake up PX coming up anyway? Good lord. I feel like V Trigger builds too slow and uses, like, you know, it's too all or nothing with its pop. You get one pop, maybe two. I would like additional pops. I would like V Meter to build faster. And more stuff to use it on. And also the fact that it kind of conflicts. Nice. That's a combo. This should kill. Ryu's V Trigger needs a complete overhaul. Making it last longer would be not even good. Second hit only if that lets very low damage. You can jump straight out of that. Jumping towards was okay, but jumping up would have gotten him a full jumping combo. But jumping towards is okay. He jumped before he reacted. Yeah, when you actually block that, it's 50-50. Between command grab and uh, low short. Wish for Abigail are actually exactly the same speed. 
エプレン出てしまったがうまく切り返しているタイルクリーダー依然ストーム久保ブリュース V-Trigger in general doesn't do enough Like think about Akuma Think about Akuma's V-Trigger If Akuma gets a fireball from pretty close Not only does he get increased damage But he also gets a DP juggle on reaction The DP juggle does 200 extra damage on top of that Okay That's if Akuma gets a close range fireball What does Ryu get if he gets a fireball and V-Trigger? He gets like a little more stun The fact that Ryu's V trigger does more stun is almost irrelevant because Ryu cannot efficiently get enough momentum to dizzy people. The fact that it does extra damage is okay. But even then, it only does extra damage on like Hadoukens and DPs, not on everything else. Oh shit, no, give it back. Oh yeah, look at that. What a cool matchup. Oh yeah, that's a combo after my heart right there. That was unsafe, and that low short is a punish, and Chun Li should have punished, should have comboed, should have cancelled the low short. He might have been able to do EX legs after that back fierce V trigger. But the reset was good too. Ryu needs to vary his fireball speed more in general. Also, I'm going to be that guy who says Ryu fireball point blank should be like plus one. That would make him really easy to play. And it would also make him kind of, it would kind of cement him as like a character with like a really good fireball. Which is the easiest niche to give him right now. And also consistent with all the other games he's been in. Crouch Fierce the sweep works. He was just a little too far. That was a good combo to pick from that range, but it didn't hit. So I guess it wasn't a good combo to pick from that range. That's going to kill. Oh. His hard fireball speed is really fast. He needs more variance though. You need a really slow one too. Fast fireballs are nice, but slow fireballs are even better. A regular speed fireball is probably the worst kind. Having a super super quick bullet fireball is great, but having a really really slow fireball is the best by far. We need to have less fireball recovery, and in the process of them giving him less fireball recovery, they need to make it so his fireballs are like plus one. If you can just brainlessly cancel everything at the fireball, that would help new players try to learn how to play the game. It would also help reuse corner game at all levels of play. But it would never be too strong because it would always sacrifice momentum or pressure. That's plus. DP and Fireball being V-Trigger cancelable would be an extremely good direction to go. Since Akuma and Ken can do that. Jump back jab. Suddenly had a gun in Alpha 3. Sharon had a, had a gun. Yeah, one of the dolls has a gun. April, I think. There's no combo from a semi game kick like that from that far away. I can't tell that's a girl. I saw a purse. And maybe some slightly feminine outfit. But she looked kind of flat. Whoa, hold on. I think I saw Ed. No, it's Nash. 
That's a nice Nash show animation. This fucking, uh... This devil outfit. It looks straight out of Tenacious D. Ryu literally needs stamina kick from Akuma as a new normal. Ryu's just not interesting, that's his big problem. Donkey Kick would be a good step in that direction. Ryu has very little variance in the way he can be played. They have a really good example of a Ryu with a lot of personality from Street Fighter 4, who also has good combo avenues and more interesting normals in general. Of all the characters they utterly fucked up between this game and 4, 4 in this game, I feel like Ryu's the only one where they actually like well and truly fucked up. A lot of the other changes to characters I either think are cool or don't mind. <laughs> But good lord, Ryu was ruined. Even season 1 Ryu was a lot worse. That's just fine. Neat. Nash probably has to like jump strong those or something. The stomps. Very nice. All that walking backward. Sermon still got the combo. He expanded Izzy. But I don't know if he could have. No, he probably could have killed with the Dizzy. He didn't have much HP left. Even with a lot of scaling, that's probably alright. Making noises like they just played. Oh, they did just play. In the beta, did it? I don't remember that. It did in Omega. I don't remember it doing it in 5 ever. Having a Tatsu that hits scratching opponents would be fucking swell. I'm okay with Ryu having that. Reminded that uh, Ibuki's target combo, her punch target combo, leads to her relatively max damage combos. And it's only minus 5 on block. I think he didn't get full charge from that. Oh, I'm glad that didn't hit. Oh no, that should have killed. Hit the wrong combo. You need to have a combo ready for when you get when you block an overhead. For Ibuki, it's like reversal, hard DP, or like staying strong into, or I should say, staying short into um, command grab. Something like that. Oh, that was like a fuck up, but he salvaged it. He did not want that, I know, because he whiffed a normal in the wrong direction. Oh, he went with the recent instead of the grab. That was probably better. Probably a good decision. Save here is just a pretty questionable play right there. Trying to whiff cancel something, probably. That was cool. Got the charge. Jury's skill is pretty good, but it doesn't do a whole lot of work in this matchup. 
I don't like that. That opens him up to a comeback. If you like, don't. If you're not that close to killing the opponent, wasting your kunai like that is horrible. You better be leaving them with a smidge. Like now, it's gonna be really hard for him to use his V trigger. Yeah, there you go. Yvori would probably take them 10 minutes to add, and he probably would improve the game. No matter how delayed your light uh, Fuharakaku hits, you can't use it to cover a forward dash. Gimmick tech. That Stain Fierce counter hit, he probably had a link out of that. Probably though strong. You can always do Stain Fierce Stain short, I think. Which means you can probably do Stain Fierce into mediums. Oh my god. That didn't even combo. I never liked the low strong towards Renhus Ender. I much prefer the Jan Ender. Oops. He had like a fucking brainwave error. Brain fart. One thing I secretly hate about Ibuki is that her DP on block is crush counter only for EX. I wish they didn't do that. I get it, it's because only EX is invincible. But I just feel like all versions should be crush counter punishable. That's what Gal works. I think that's the way the shadows work. I don't want to have to check my swing because it wasn't EX. I don't want EX to radically change my punish. It's annoying when I fucking hit. I've done that. I've like blocked a Ibuki hard DP. I've done it. A Akuma stand run house. And then like no follow up. I can still salvage that. I can do two stand run houses into far strong and still get a decent combo. Or rather into close forward. I like how I'm saying far strong and close forward when it's just strong and forward. That was pretty nice. Remember that time Ibuki burned all our kunai? Did we miss a round? Akuma's crouch forward, the main difference between it and Ryu's is that one, Akuma has actual follow-ups even from a max range low forward. And two, um... Uh, it's, her box is really, really tiny. So Ryu kind of opens himself, himself up to whiff punishing, and Akuma doesn't. Akuma's crouch medium kick will either whiff mutually with another attack, or it'll, like, trade or win with another attack. But usually win. The nice thing about Akuma is that on any connect, you can technically go to medium Tatsu. And usually you won't because it's usually ridiculously outclassed. But there are certain enders where he has no other, he has no completion except medium Tatsu. And in those contexts, you use medium Tatsu. So you get like max range, low forward. Without a confirm, you just cancel to, low ta to medium Tatsu on hit. That was nice. I wouldn't touch Ibuki's kill, I like that. I think Ibuki's alright. I want Ibuki I want Ibuki to be the benchmark for how characters should be. Ibuki feels like a much higher power level than most characters, but that's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing for the other characters, it's not a bad thing for Ibuki. Ibuki's fun. Other characters need to be fun like her. You have to be thoughtful to play Ibuki. I guess I might nerf her. Uh, I'll probably remove jab. I would probably nerf the juggle potential of uh, jab forward as an air TC to remove the um, resets. 
but that wouldn't even remove all the resets, so just remove some of them. Resets are not the way this game is supposed to be played. Well, they are, but like, you know, there's a big tier gap between characters with good resets and characters without good resets. Characters with momentum do really well compared to characters that don't, and Ibuki has too much momentum. I think Ibuki and Nakuma are good benchmarks. They made everyone too weak in this game. Ibuki and Nakuma feel like they actually have like thoughts they have to have in a match. Stand forward to stand forward. Kind of only. He saw it. That combo's kind of cute. It's not that good though. Tricky. I like that because it was like zero risk. Maybe not zero, but not very much. Raw EX stomp, huh? Nikali's a character I feel really lacks in complexity, to be honest. I don't want to buff Nikali, don't get me wrong. I think he's okay tier wise. I just feel like Nikali's entire game plan is stay medium kick and occasionally stand short and occasionally command grab. Stay medium kick does too much everything. Whoa, I think I saw Vega. Technically, it's two Vegas. I don't like. I don't like Stevan House and, and Bison. I feel like I feel like that move probably should be duckable. I feel like if that move was on any other character, it would be duckable. It already leads to pretty good damage on hit, and it's safe. It's like plus one or whatever. <laughs> and then it's a crush counter to boot. What's the downside, damn it? What's the reason you stand strong ever? Speed is the answer to that question. I feel like Samurai has a lot of redundancy with both staying strong and down towards fierce. But it's better than both of them. It's a better, it's a better like frame trap button and like plus frame button, combo button. 
than staying strong. And it's a lot faster than down towards Fierce. This should kill quite comfortably. Oh my god, I heard it through a reset. He did jump around us and then through. He didn't need that, he could have just killed with a combo. He had two bars and he was in V trigger. And he actually gets good returns for meter spent. I need a drink. I just had a pint of green tea, but I need a pint more. Lifesteal would actually be really cool. I was kind of convinced by that argument. Eating souls, lifesteal, I'm down. How about those desyncs? How about life gem? Looked pretty good, didn't it? How about Cloud 805? I was thinking of like super advanced um, soul, soul Storm combos, but that's the first time I've seen anyone do any. And they're not really the way I pictured them. They're most of the way I pictured them. I theorized that, but I didn't theorize it with any character. I theorized, based on one of the trials, I was like, oh, you can pick a big body and then use it to keep the opponent in certain positions. But it doesn't need to be a big body. Zero is very small. But you can get mid-screen combos. You can get corner-only combos mid-screen by using, like, a body. But they're, like, better than corner-only combos because they can keep, you know, you're not being pushed out. Soulstorm has one of the higher ceilings for the storms, so I think Soulstone will probably. I think Soulstone will be used for the entire lifespan of the game as it is right now. The stones I think are really busted are space is probably number one. And then, busted is the wrong word because I don't want to nerf. So, space is probably one. And then probably, probably soul next. Reality is like falsely high. Reality has a really good surge. But reality storm is only kind of good. Or it's, it's really good, but you can learn to play around it. And the ceiling is not super high for it. The floor is really high. The second you pick Reality Stone, you don't need a brain. You can just like start using it properly. But um, um, eventually it's not going to be as good as it is now. People are going to get better at fighting it. And the combos you can do with it aren't that much better than just regular ass combos. Like yeah, you can do like certain things where you put Fierces in particular spots during combos. Where you combo like the full dragon in addition to whatever combo you're going to do. Or like combos into the Lightning Bolt. The Lightning Bolt does really good damage for what it's worth. There's definitely a lot of, like, it's not like there's no potential to Reality Storm uh, buffing the fuck out of your combos. But it's not as good as, like, a lot of the other storms. Time and um, Soul are a lot better in terms of depth. And then space is probably also better. Space is more useful for footsies. Reality and space are very footsie oriented. Soul and time are very combo oriented. Power and mind are not super interesting. 
Power and Mind have good, nice surges to compensate for the fact their storms are kind of ass. The thing about all the stones is they auto correct. I'm sure you guys have been seeing Spider Man with Power Stone. It's a pretty cool idea. You can zip around, and then even if you zip past the opponent, you can just mash that Power Stone and get the turn around. Attack them from ranges where they wouldn't normally be. You know, you can get quick cross ups and then convert them into very big combos. So I kind of knew that Mindstone did a pretty significant damage nerf, but good lord. Mindstone, like, I was like, oh, it's a grab, so it's probably okay. Helps you mix up. But, like, Mindstone combos just aren't very strong. If you manage to get a Mind Surge and you do, like, your max damage. Mindstone is probably the one that's going to be broken eventually. Well, maybe not broken. But, like, um... If combos... Like, you know this new glitch that's been showing up? The fucking, uh... The glitch that resets your... Your... Uh, combo delay, or whatever it's called. Decay. Hit stun decay. HSD glitch, or whatever. Is that it? That might be the name of it. If you start getting stuff, stuff like that, or like infinites, Mind Stone is going to be the best stone. Apart from that, Mind Stone is probably the worst. Yeah, certain characters can do a ton of damage without reducing the hit stun very much at all. Certain characters can do a ton of hit stun decay without doing very much damage at all. Both Iron Man and Chun-Li seem to be extremely good for the HSD glitch, but I haven't done any research for them. But both of them are very friendly to both getting... Uh, HSD glitch and um, getting combos that lead to it. Look at all that white health. Scary. It's hard to get that back. There it goes. That's in crutch fierce. High for optimal. 10x damage. Good to sustain fierce. He went for the baby combo. Abigail can be kind of funky in the corner, and that combo is also very funky in the corner. And the baby combo still killed, so that was a good decision on three counts. Yeah, in the corner you can't run away like that. He should have tried to parry. Look at all that white. That was a punish, I think. Damn, where did it all go? He's Wow, that was a weird viewers. I mean, I get it, but like now, neither of them are never going to get B trigger. Good lord. I'll be right back. I gotta refill the screen team. My throat's like seriously hurting. I might be getting sick.
Is it Kubo or the Korean player who won? Kyobetsu. I guess I'll find out this way. Looks like they're right about to go in. I take a big old sip of green tea while I was down there. Straight up from the fridge. Green tea is the fucking magical elixir. I like that bitter shit, but I also like that sweet shit. I always get that low calorie stuff though. I don't want no hyper sugar green teas. He actually had a, he got a three hit medium tossy there. So he could have juggled a hard DP at the end of that. He chose not to. Maybe he didn't see it in time or maybe he just wants the Oki. You have much better Oki off of a medium tatsu than you do a hard DP. You gotta be a pretty brave guy to name your, name your, use your handle as like, name your handle after your fetish. This guy's fetish is armpit play, I can tell. Serenos so was kind of a whack play there. I guess it was good on block. Hi. How you doing today, Alan? I woke up fully rested after like four hours sleep and I don't know what's going on. I'll probably sleep again sometime today. This happens to me every now and then. I'm just not sleepy and then invariably I take a nap in the middle of the day. Tried to punish Crouch Runhouse with stamp forward. That was kind of cool, but it didn't work. I'm okay with season passes, I guess, for fighting games. I like hotfixes in fighting games. I'm glad that's a thing. I'm glad we have balanced patches and shit when uh, something broken is found. Marvel 3 for a really long time was like, if anything broken is found, we know that it's never ever going to change, it's going to be there forever. But now Marvel Infinite's out, and it's like, well, you know, someone found some Spider-Man ass fucking infinite. Oh, they're just going to remove it. 
That's a nice feeling, that's a lot better. I have like hope for the future of the game and shit. I was kind of considering Spider-Man, Iron Man. That would actually be like a pretty good team, I feel. Spider-Man is like, um, maybe a better Chun-Li than Chun-Li is. But emphasis on maybe. Because both Chun-Li and Spider-Man have like really ridiculously high ceilings. Brutus, I saw you get called out, or not called out, shouted out, um, by a couple people on Twitter. They were like, damn, this Geef is the best. My Chun is far from solid. If you think my Chun is solid, you should see what Chun is capable of in Marvel. Because my Chun is like a baby Chun. Chun is absolutely bonkers. In um, in MBCI, Chun is a good pick for me. I'm fairly happy with my team now. My team feels like it's got a whole lot of potential. What was your final placing? That's pretty good. Am I pretty good? I mean, real good. Even the way my Chun combos work compared to the way Chun Li's combos can optimally work. One thing I don't do with Chun is a regular ass jump. But that's where Chun really, really, really shines. Her two best normals I don't use at all. And those are Stay and Fierce and Stay and House. Stay and House gives you a launch, but a launch into a regular jump, which gives you very, very low to the ground combos, which lets you go for like jump fierce, air dash, jump round, towards round house, into like repeated combos like that. I've been kind of considering looking at Strider, but I haven't yet. I do like Strider a lot. Iron Man is definitely like a cemented onto my team though. I like him. And he's paid off pretty well for me. I haven't seen anyone else play him to be honest. Except Chris G. I've seen like two pros play him and like no no actual people. No physical people. But he seems to be quite good. A lot of people are saying he's the worst air dasher. But how bad can you really be if you're an air dasher? And I have a sneaking suspicion he is not actually the worst air dasher. That being said, from what I can tell, I would hazard a guess that Ultron is probably better overall than Iron Man. Pretty easy to compare them. All I'm thinking watching this is how much I'd rather be watching um NBCI. Suddenly, Stan Fierce is really good because uh, it moves you really far forward. The combo I do is crouch, like, short, crouch round house, kind of thing. Crouch jab, crouch short, crouch round house. And then I do a jump from there, if it's, like, blocked. Or I do, like, a crouch fierce, or, like, a, a wait into crouch round house, crouch fierce again, like OTG. That's, what, that's my current combo. But I can make the combo way better by doing stand fierce in the middle of that. 
Crouch jab, crouch short, stay in fierce, crouch roundhouse. Because that would take me, that would give me a big step forward. And that way I would get better pressure on the jump cancel on block. So even if they push blocked, I would still be able to like get, I would still be able to make them block stuff. And also, um, it would do more, more damage on a hit. But I'm just a little bit shitty at um, crouch stay and crouch kind of combos. So I fuck it up a little bit. So I could make a huge improvement to my Chun-Li game just adding in that normal. My Iron Man combos are actually not too bad. Like they're not too far off from like the very hyper optimal combos. Although there's still a little bit of room for improvement. I just need to work on the chun a lot, but the chun neutral is a lot harder. MC jump, low, short, stand jab. It's too easy to block. How nice would it be if she had overhead into like a link and be trigger? I think I got a little mentally guard broken against Bab last um, Baf Cup when he was like bitching about um, uh, Iron Man Rekas. I got a little prideful, I think. In my head, I was like, I don't need Iron Man Rekas to f kick your ass. But then I um, let him make a comeback. I should have just like fallen even harder on Iron Man Rekas and just let him bitch. But I kind of turned them off a little bit once he started complaining about them. Rekas are so friendly to tagging, and they're also so combo friendly. The only problem is if you start with hard Rekas, it's kind of hard to get like a really beefy combo. If you start with light Rekas, you're okay. Yeah, I didn't even get what Spebs was complaining about, to be honest. He was like complaining about like Iron Man's tools. It's like, shit dude, you think Iron Man's top one? My own fault though. I should have ignored it. We were saying shit like, um, rather fight S fried, or at least I know what's going on. Is that a complaint at me? I can't tell. Iron Man and Chun Li are both slept on, I think, based on what I understand of what they can do and how how little I see them in tournament. They're both probably high tier. I think they have a bit of synergy. They might have a lot of synergy, but I don't know yet. But they definitely have a bit. When you say a combo ball level 3, what do you mean? Because like every character has a combo ball level 3. You mean like combo out of it? That's like, that is good. But that's not enough to like make Chris good. Not inherently. I'm not even saying Chris is bad because he might be okay, I don't know. The current opinion is that Chris is really ho horrible. But having a level 3 you can cob out of is kind of rare and kind of good. So, yes. That is good. The thing about Chun-Li, the, the actual reason I picked Chun-Li is I want a quick overhead low mix-up. And the reason I want a quick overhead low mix-up is that uh, Proton Cannon takes a really fucking long time. It's one of the longest duration beam supers in the game. So I get, like, you know, several opportunities for lows or overheads while making someone block that. Which on paper is really, really good because I can end any combo in a Photon Cannon. And then use the low overhead to reset 
to build another meter to land another photon cannon. They're really, really strong on paper. ま、さか形状作って。レイクウィンクで。ここで行きましたね。そうですね。形状使ってでも倒しきたかったか。取り切っていったのは、ウイリベがそれで1-1へファイナルラウンド。もう残り I think my stone choice could maybe use work. I don't know what the best stone is for me yet. Reality is just the one that's easiest to use, but probably space stone would be better. Not even anything necessarily about Iron Man and John, although they both have good enough mix ups to make Space Stone work. Between air dashing and instant overhead stuff. <laughs> but Space Stone is just kind of good anyway. I don't like Soul that much. Space Stone is like, you kind of like get it up, and then you just have, no matter how much meter your opponent has, you have like a good opportunity to kill their character. They can't tag out and they can't do the two bar tag. And once a character's dead, like no matter, even if you're Soul Stone, once a character's dead, it's just so easy to like, turn that to a win. The revive of Soul Stone is really overrated, I feel, although it is nice. It's really hard to make the revive actually work. If you're using it like a revive, I, this is the thing I think is going to become much more of a thing later on. Um, is you land a, you don't use your revive right away to dodge the incoming mix up or anything like that. You use your revive, t like you land a hit and then you use your revive and then you do a two person combo. Confirming into the into the activate is going to be a huge thing for Soulstone, and it's going to let you get a bunch of HP back on your second character, and then get you you know a level three. Here's the thing about the revive is that um well hold on I gotta sneeze. If you just pop it to bring a character back, that character is locked on screen until you use a level three, or until the storm runs out, and that character also has very low HP. And if that character dies. You lose your storm instantly ends, and you also lose all of the. Uh, you don't get any like soul meter or anything like that. Well, you wouldn't anyway, because you just revived a character. But you know, once that character's on screen, it's like they're a, they're not a sitting duck because you control them still. But like, you can't easily control how safe they are. You can't get them out of there, and that's a big deal. That's something that's very exploitable. Soul for the ability to control both characters is theoretically quite strong for both footsies and combos, but you have to be really smart about it. Having a character on both sides of the opponent is a really fucking big deal, if you can set that up, if you have ways of setting that up with your team. Some characters can do that really easily, some can't. It depends on both characters of your team. But if you have some way to get a character on both sides, that basically means the opponent can't do anything, because they, they can only attack in one direction. And the second they start beating up one of your characters, you can have the other character hit them out of it. And then you can potentially turn that into a full combo. That's like a real thing. Yeah, Strider can do that easily. Strider is one of the characters you can easily get to the opposite side of from the opponent. The opponent is basically helpless for a very long time if you can split up the sides of your characters. But then you need to be able to push a mix-up with one character.
車でクラッシュカウンターも光っていますレバーニラ選手のレガーこれは軸ずれで立ち中継のコンボを少しいる I guess you could theoretically use Soulstone to get like simultaneous lows and overheads. That's probably some way of doing that. You got MBCI? You got a you got a you got a team yet? My understanding of MBCI is actually getting pretty good. I don't know if it's time to start making some videos. Ghost Rider Nemesis. That team seems pretty easy to play. SF5 killed a lot of people. What is this link? What's the night fights? 3.7 grand finals. What game? MVCI? I don't know. Yeah, it is. I didn't watch this. Is that clockwork? I like how completely misaligned this is. I like the way clockwork plays a lot. I like his team. There we go. Nice reflect against the daggers. Those projectile push blocks are going to be a huge thing in this game. Practice them now. That is not safe anymore. No. You got to tag it. The way that Gamora says hear you sounds exactly like the way that the uh, announcer said hear you in NBC1. It's identical, dude. <laughs> like, I wouldn't even be surprised to find out it's the same woman. Strange is pretty good with the box. The box is pretty good in general. Okay, that super is hot garbage right now. Yeah, because if even if you get the counter off, you're unsafe if you're not actively hitting the person who did the. Uh, that did the projectile in the first place? You're unsafe. Yeah. Okay. Looking all right in that box. Uh, first anti uh, box oh ideas I had God. in my head. That's so dumb. Shutter with the full screen combos. They put you in the box and you activate orbs. It doesn't matter when you've got full screen combos. Yep. Remember in um, MVC3 how Viper knew Strider? Wouldn't it be kind of funny if Viper was added to like Street Fighter 5 and it turned out she was just mistaking like Strider for like Zeku? Capcom with the long con. Really strong. <laughs> oh yeah, she just she looks looks real good. I feel like her one main weakness is that she's she's at her. She attacks uh, at strange angles. Yeah, like, but like if anyone can get the high ground on her and zone air to ground, then they do have some advantage. I do believe Zero does well against her. Uh, Dante does okay against her. I want more Dark Stalkers characters. But on the ground, she is just totally dominant. Yeah. I want fucking Jay Talban. I wouldn't play him, but I want him. Shadow's got nice big hitboxes. 
They're not like stupid big, but they're big enough. Nice. From what I can tell, Rocket on the ground is actually very small, which makes him very annoying to hit. But Rocket in the air is like the same size as other characters. But it's a little bit deceptive the way he works. Like Iron Man, the opponent's height is very important for your ability to do like air wreckers and combo out of them. And it still seems to be the same difficulty on Rocket. But the height, it looks different. It looks like you need it looks like you need him so low that other characters would fall out. But Rocket's taller than he looks when being juggled. I'll look at Strider soon. I'll like do some Strider BNBs and stuff and see if I can't make him work. Counter super sucks. I, I, I don't believe in it anymore. Alright. 2 0 clockwork right now. One more to take the tournament. Flash has got a long road ahead if he wants to win this. Alright, come on, Dan. Send us home. <laughs> Gamora has a very good projectile. Gamora can get in very easily. Gamora has not only an pr advancing projectile, but it's an advancing projectile that like leads to a full combo that like cannot be push blocked. That's all pretty potent. Like if she only had that, she would still be all right. But she's got other neat stuff too. I feel like she's—I don't know what tier she is. It's really hard to talk about tiers, certainly anyway. But I would tentatively say she's probably a strong character. I don't know about top tier, but probably at least high. Strutter is hard to talk about. He might be weak. He seems strong to me, but I don't know that. When I see the Strider's like movement, I feel like he can't possibly be bad. But I, you know, I felt I felt that, and then like Felicia and MVC three had fucking movement that was just as stupid, if not more stupid, and she was considered to be bottom for a long time. Right there. Ooh, no legs. it's a really bad place to be in. There is the beater. It doesn't matter. I don't care about you, Space Stone. Oh, that's such a good full screen. That little double beam attack. It's like a beam super, but it's free. Real quick. That's a nice special move. That's like a really good thing that Strange has. I've never seen this do work ever, to be honest. I've never seen anyone like use Gamora's shadow combination to actually do anything like productive. It's always like activate and then oops I died. That was like a decent amount of work. Strange definitely seems like he's got a lot of neat stuff. And Clockwork takes the inaugural. Is Vajra still um, full combo if it hits a mid-air opponent? Is that still how that works? Alright, here's Dreamhack Denver. I didn't watch this, so... This is new to me. X! Nemesis! What the fuck is going on? I think that Nemesis with Time Stone is pretty good. X with Time Stone is probably also good. So this is probably an okay team with a plan. Nemesis really benefits from both the Storm and the Surge of Time. I think Time Stone X is probably like enjoy these projectiles, which is alright. Oh, he dropped it.
Nemesis is so tall. Nice. He might have been able to do the the super with the firing the rocket. Sorry, I'll just watch both. Power stoners, you get a you get the first combo in one of your matches. You so no matter what happens like in the rest of the match, you get like any connect you want for your first combo. The opponent can't start playing until you've gotten at least one hit. And that's important. The first combo is like the most important combo of the whole match. You might as well just make it so you win that round. They just give each stone to the best player of that given stone. And then, like, as more and more of the stones get handed out, people have to start using the other ones. That'd be pretty funny. And eventually, like, whatever last stone they do, let's say they end with mind. And it's just like, every single person in the tournament's using mind. So what's the deal with the stones? It's like, if you have a stone and you lose, the person who beats you gets the, gets the stone? Is that how that works? Cap is pretty cool. Probably the neatest thing about Cap, besides the shield going through projectiles and whatnot, is um, uh, the little flip. The cartwheel. Cap's cartwheel is actually super, super good. That instant overhead. Raccoon's like up close mix up is super super silly. Missed the air dash jump short or whatever. The stones, I think it's pretty funny. It's definitely like very much for fun. So who has a stone so far? What are who are the current stone owners? I know that when they're handing out initial stones, it has to be to someone who doesn't have a stone yet. But you can have more than one stone at a time theoretically, right? You can invoke your stone one time per tournament, but if you have two stones, can you evoke your stone, like your one stone once and then your other stone once? There we go, too much. Time stone. You begin your round with uh, only 10 marvel seconds left on the clock. Wonder what team would be really good for that. 
That was actually very cool. When did Kazunoko get one? Didn't Justin Wong win C? Why didn't he get a stone? Ah. That's amongst Nova though. Look pretty good. I like the Samong's team. That time zone doing work. So storms work like super cancels, I think. And stones work like special cancels, I think. So anytime you can do a super cancel, you can do a storm. And anytime you do a... Anytime you can do a special cancel, you can do a stone. I think... You think Captain Marvel's the most stormy character in this game? I can see that. That's probably true, yeah. The most underused character? You mean the greatest disparity between tier and use? I feel like there's a really good answer to that, but I've got to think it over. <laughs> Ryu. <laughs> if you want just the least used character, it's probably Ryu or Hulk or Chris. I haven't seen a Ryu at all. I heard there was one at like a Toronto thing recently. I have don't think I've... I think I've seen like one Chris. I've seen a couple Hulks. Hulk is a little bit of a thing. Although I think other big bodies, if you're going to run Hulk, you might as well run Hager right now. From what I can tell. Hulk's got some neat stuff. Probably not booty. He's definitely unique from the other big bodies. Honey's like low key big body. Secret big body character. Honey definitely plays like a big body. No doubt. Got the big body spirit. Even if she doesn't have the big body body. So is Morgan's DP a real DP? I haven't actually tested yet, but is Chun-Li's DP a real DP? I have no idea. I need to figure that out soon. Yeah. 
Good lord, Monster Hunter. And Power Stone. Storm. That's grody. I don't think this can kill even many tags right now. It's not going to do enough. Oh my god, that crutch face was so shit. These combos are weird. That all comboed. I've never seen those kinds of Morgan combos. I've been seeing other stuff lately. I didn't know she could get a bunch of DPs in a row. That's really kind of cool. It looks very shitty. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's doing all that much damage. Or three Shadow Blades. And then if you tag cancel it, it doesn't look like it's very tag friendly. It's like you, the opponent's at a really awkward height. I'm pretty sure. I'm not dead sure. I'm pretty sure um stand, stand hard kick from uh from Jetta is an overhead. It was an overhead in um Vampire Savior. Oh no. Neat. Ah. That's not even swag, this is optimal. I think he lost Morgan. That's a shame it would have killed her. Could he have time stone through Morgan? And we got that nice crutch fierce and did nothing with it. That Tella. Oh, drop the combo. That changed everything. This looks like a solid solid zoning team. Space Stone, Hawkeye Ultron. This is like I can hang back as much as I want to and then if I get any connect I can suddenly zip in and kill you. Good team on paper. This will never ever happen. Just come back. Smooth Viper's got this. I think it's a hint that Capcom can make easy money making classic costumes. Hey, costumes themselves are easy money. Overusing assets is the easiest way about it. 
or maybe not reusing assets, but reusing designs. If they reuse, they don't have to be creative. And creativity costs money. Time and effort. Oh my god, what is this mess? Both of them just mashing space zone on each other. Hawkeye's kind of good. Very cool character. Ooh. Huh? Shouldn't have been two ice? Why did he do a poison one? He had a full combo, I think. Oh my god, he hasn't taken damage yet. Very cool. Lost man's using the blueberry. There he is. You know what's kind of good that I didn't know Iron Man could do it until pretty recently? If you get a point blank uh, up laser super up photon cannon on a cornered opponent um, and your gravity isn't too high, you can actually um, combo that into a crutch run us into another, into a straight photon cannon. Or even uh, crutch run us into three hard wreckers into straight photon cannon. You can get double photon cannon combos with uh, Iron Man. But you need to do it from a pretty short combo. Well. He didn't need that. You can mash to get out of the ice, but you can't mash to get your partner out of the ice if your partner gets frozen, which can lead to them getting beaten up. I've noticed this is a strat, and I've been doing it a lot. It's whenever um, your character is getting comboed. If you do like the combo breaker tag, or not combo breaker, but you know, the two bar tag, um, zipping to the other side of the opponent. Wait till they super jump, because most combos use a super jump somewhere, and then go under them and get to the other side. And most characters can't keep a combo going if they're facing the wrong way. And if they can keep a combo going only for a couple hits. So by going under them, you force them to turn around, which forces them to drop your other character. But it's also like totally riskless, since you're not even approaching them or anything. Good way to save a character. Oh no, his reality stone fucked his combo. Normally it's okay to have a reality stone kind of zoop in during your combo. Yeah, see that? He dashed under Ultron, which forced Ultron to turn around. 
You actually don't need to think when using Reality Stone, the Surge. It's like, any situation where you can move your character is a good time to use it. If you're coming down from the air, it's a perfectly fine time to use a Reality Stone. The opponent's coming in off the side of the screen, perfectly fine time. Reality probably should go away if you get hit, to be honest. That would be probably balanced. High durability projectiles shouldn't exist. Or not, no, that's okay. High durability projectiles, but like lasting projectiles after you get hit probably shouldn't exist in this game, to be honest. Especially like the fucking Rose bed. Probably shouldn't exist. I mean, it's fine for Rose bed to exist, but like probably if you hit Dormammu, it should go away. Or Reality Stone. I'm starting to get sleepy. That four hours of sleep just caught up with me. Instantly. I might take a nap and then come back. I got work tonight. My mom's coming back from England tonight. I'll finish this set at least. But the sooner I sleep, the more likely I'm about to get the correct amount of sleep before work, which is the most important thing for me today. Might. Is it you? Playing Aura? Yeah. That makes up. Alright, yeah, just show up next time. I think Thanos can combo out of that super if he gets it from a certain height. Well, that was a combo. Aura Necro is pretty good for Aura. I've played that much a plot. It's very good for Aura. I like super too. Maybe one more. Yeah, you gotta be careful about your approach, it's the only thing. If you do, um, if you approach recklessly against Necro, you're gonna eat lots of back fierces. You have to be ready for that. Then, if you're doing jump and parry, that opens you up to other stuff, like anti-air electricity. Dare I say? Back medium punch? Like the little elbow? On top of his head? That was working? I don't think I've ever seen a Necro even do that. I thought Aura Jump Medium Kick just beat that. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure y'all don't get hit by some stuff that like anytime you 
Oh, after a parry. Any buttons a parry after an anti-air? I mean, any buttons a an anti-air after a parry? The rounds. Both characters spamming teleport behind. Dante really exploits every feature of the game. I think that's the truest thing that can be said for Dante. Is that no matter what you do, Dante can do it well. Oh, that didn't combo. I thought it did for a second. I was like, damn. The thing about the Dante move that really pisses me off, I can live with Volcano. The Dante move that only that really pisses me off is the the uh, the fiery s cyclone thing. I think you get a bunch of uh, levels, a bunch of stages for beating story mode. Is Volcano the one I'm thinking of? Volcano is the... I think Volcano is the... the ground pound, isn't it? I'm not sure. I'm like fairly confident that Dante will be nerfed. To be honest. This freezes the timer. Any cinematic thing freezes the timer for a storm. I can live with everything else Dante has. I can live with this jump roundhouse overhead. That's fine. I can live with fucking jump down fierce or whatever it is into a uh, quarter second forward, light punch, double overhead. I can live with that. I can even live with like low short into overhead stinger or fucking the million stinger stabs into whatever being super hard to punish. The thing about Dante I actually don't like, cannot tolerate, is how he can tag in from another character, from any pressure from another character, and then just get a continuous block string that push blocks do nothing against, and then get that into a tag into another character. Like, the character can fully go back and then tag in again. Like, no matter how many push blocks you use, Dante's guaranteed to get this long string off. And if if you, if it opens you up at any point, if you get hit at any point, it leads to a full combo. Yeah, 
It was not blockable, it was just low into overhead, I think. Not low into... Oh shit, no, I'm going to bed. Be back later.